you're tuned into Inside Lowell. Inside Lowell podcast brought to you in part by Washington Savings Bank, serving the greater Lowell community for over 130 years. Make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. WellPoint. Unicare is now WellPoint. New name, same commitment to Massachusetts. At WellPoint, your whole health is their whole point. Boston North Company, offering a wide variety of business solutions to help restaurant and retail clients save money. Boston North. Mahoney Oil Company, providing warmth and protection to families in Greater Lowell and Southern New Hampshire since 1925. That's Mahoney Oil. Francis E. Preventure Insurance, for auto, home, business, and life, trust the agency Greater Lowell has counted on for more than 40 years. Francis E. Preventure Insurance. GoPuff, a grocery store right at your fingertips. Use the code LOWELL20 to receive $20 off your first order of $21, plus free delivery. Download the GoPuff app or visit gopuff.com today. And by the Massachusetts Pirates, bringing all the hard-hitting action and excitement of arena football to the Songa Center in Lowell. Get your tickets today by visiting MassPiratesFootball.com. And now, time for another Inside Lowell podcast. Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Inside Lowell podcast, a gathering of the pod squad here in the WellPoint studios in beautiful, historic downtown Lowell. Unicare is now WellPoint. New name, same commitment to Massachusetts. At WellPoint, your whole health is their whole point. I'm your host, Teddy Panos, gathered here for the first time in what seems like an eternity. Mm-hmm. I think the last one we did was in January, right? Uh, yes. That sounds right. Oh. We've got the pod squad left to right on your TV monitor, computer screen, wherever the hell you're watching this. And I'll try to stop sticking my head into that camera shot there. Jack Mitchell. You're twin. wearing the matching inside little shirt. Same body type, same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack, for joining us today. Good Same argument here. style. Same <laughs> argument. <laughs> and likely during the show. Uh, the hyphen, McCain, Lahondras McCarthy is in the house as well. How are you? Good. This is a beautiful new studio. Thank you. It's, it's your first time here, right? It's, yeah. This is, I'm super impressed. I love the bookshelf. Very excited. Style. Jack doesn't like the book collection. Yeah, it is, yeah. There's some good stuff. Uh, you I may do. recognize one of them, Batch. I do. It's a good book. <laughs> but, by the way, um, He's uh, the public sports, the the public speaking portion of this podcast. Is your family lined up, ready to come out and speak? Yeah, or? No, that's yeah, hilarious. That was a, we wanted were, to support. We stick together. Were you the only people who cared about Smith Baker? No, I'm sure there's plenty of other. No, I'm sure there's plenty of other people. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people knew. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know, but right. yeah. All right, thank you for being here, Michaela, and of course. Mike Batchigalupo, a.k.a. Batch, is also in the house as well. Of course, you see Batch from time to time, not on the yep. pod squad. Beers with Batch. We haven't done Tinder those in a while. dating show. We got to get that mobile studio set up for you. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Once I finalize the lighting in here, we'll get that. Power hour when the emperor lets, when he's up for it, Emperor Han. <laughs> I mean, uh, Emperor Asa, rather. You can do it without him. You don't need Asa. It's fun, though. That's we it. get to derail him. Get the Ukraine update? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. By the way, do you know what the second most, uh, uh, the, the country with the second most hits coming to InsideLowell.com yeah, besides the United States? No, it's not Ukraine. None of them have power to mm-hmm. get the internet. Poland. I was going to say Greece or something. That's going to be Asa, because didn't he have like a couple of episodes where he was talking about Poland getting kind of dragged into it and stuff? Probably. I think those are the Ukraine refugees. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. We did. We had listeners from Ukraine, though, remember? A couple of them. Yep, I do remember. So since we last met in January. Oh, no, it's that guy that survived the Wagner Group thing. With him. He's okay. listening in. For <laughs> yeah, or whatever it is. Name. Then they killed him in a plane crash. Oh, that's right. That's right. Two big things happened in the city of Lowell that we want to focus on for this podcast. The first one was the city's... Uh, uh, updated master plan or do we call it a new master plan what what the heck are we calling you can't you can't call it master plan lol forward it's gonna, it's gonna be it's primary. gonna be lead you can't say primary because that dei officer yes <laughs> yeah like they 
That's Lo it's saying. a new plan. Lowell 2024, right? Look, 2040. Lowell or, or Lowell 2040, uh, Lowell forward is the master plan, as you can see it no, there on the whiteboard. Say, you can't say new because new is a microaggression against old. <laughs> He's already derailing us. The second part of our podcast today over something that uh, was announced uh, last week, uh, to some degree, uh, Lowell Inc., the Lowell Innovation Network Corridor, a.k.a. the East Campus development that we've been waiting patiently for, for a couple of years, it seems to be on the verge of becoming reality. And uh, who knows, by the time we get out of the podcast studio tonight, there might even be some new information coming out Ooh, really? at the city council oh, meeting yeah, because at the subcommittee meeting, probably going on as we speak right now, mm -hmm. uh, the university is going to make a, a pitch uh, or, or show some, some information to the economic development subcommittee. So a lot of things to be excited about. Yeah, well, that, that plan, by the way, that's like a 35-year-old plan. That's been that East was campus. Yeah, because that was before the Lawrence Mill fire back in the day. They were going to do a whole thing over there, and then it got derailed by that. So it's kind of it's been it's it's really has been in the works for like that long at least. That's exciting. I didn't know we were waiting yeah. thirty five years for it. So. Yeah. So good stuff. So why is everybody so miserable about it? Then? Who's I, miserable well, about it? So I heard I heard some of the lots are <laughs> undersized. <laughs> I'm not miserable about it. I'm excited about it. So you're excited well, about this? Yeah. Who's miserable? Well, Jack, I'm excited about you're it. not sold on seen a lot of things i've heard a lot of things i mean the lowell plan is a um their plans we were talking about that off air the um that was done i don't know a decade ago the whole area are sort mm -hmm. of immediately adjacent to the songus arena um the stuff in between songus and or at least that one canal that kind of runs along the side and a little asher park that's been a little bit of a mystery let's say but the, all the stuff uh, towards the song this has been described multiple times for at least a decade and yeah maybe even more so there was supposed i think it might have been it was definitely going to be the college of education something else was going to go into the the lawrence mills before 87 and i remember there was a nanotech center it's supposed to go in there 1.2 like so this has been in the works but i think the difference that low plan thing if i'm not mistaken wasn't that was part of that plan, right? Like the master plan? The sustainable little 2025? I think it was. Talking yeah. about Jeff Speck's downtown evolution plan. Or Maybe the that's the one. Or, or the original master plan. But so here, or but little here, forward. Or, they look, I, I look get confused. Them all. There's so many But here's the difference. I think when they made that plan, I think the Songus was owned by the city back then. So now the big the difference is you can get shit done with the university. This is it sounds like <laughs> that, it's that's like the happening. way I look at it. I mean, yeah. it's, it sounds it's like, like it's happening. Yeah, I mean, you get the I, with Lowell on their own. You get you get Trinity and the Jam Plan with with UMass Lowell and Lowell. You might get something actually to happen. The university gets things done. Yeah, I do watched they? I watched the thing. They that do. You, yeah, because I, they're not they're not um, distracted from political you know sort of hugs. Right. So when you had nine counselors, there was, you know, so many people pulling strings. Now we have 11, which isn't that much different. Although now they're sort of insulated in their neighborhoods. They don't necessarily have to answer to any particular strong voting group. But um, the university has a way with um, getting money out of the legislature and finding uh, research dollars, business interests and um grants and stuff like that and so. the students and the workforce that can bring the companies here so i want to save the best for last because i think that is the best part of the news that's come out oh, yeah. in the last couple of months and i want to go to the thing that i i question why we're getting so excited about it and that is the the new master plan lowell forward michaela you actually were enterprising we did show prep by the way for this i want, want people to know we actually you didn't read it no i I, I went full city council and just did the bare minimum. So I'll just go with my gut. <laughs> You'll just speak without knowing you can, what you're you talking about. You can take about. this copy <laughs> yeah. with you if you want. Yeah. Just, just go right we to can, it. Take me two seconds. But, <laughs> yeah. but, but Michaela, you printed all, what is it, 100 I, pages? So we, we, I don't the normally, irony of her printing it out? I, not lost on me. I don't normally print things out, but this is the least printer like PDF friendly document I've ever seen in my life. You it wasn't really easy PDF. to work with. I wanted to, I wanted to PDF it and send it to like my digital thing to read and you can't. And it's the least printer friendly thing I've ever seen. Very when, beautiful. When very you, beautiful. as a bound, pretty graphs. Wait, why did you, book. Why don't you download that? Cause I've been getting a lot of spam from you in the last half hour. 
Really? No, I'm joking. Wait, wait what? Saying you got hacked. Oh, saying I got hacked? Yes. Oh, because of, because of, because I downloaded yes. it. I don't know. Tilt it the other way so they can see, well. It's just a lot, it's like, it's beautiful, beautiful, Good. but not printer friendly and lots of wasted space, but it's very beautiful. Yeah. I mean, like, it's like a, ma it's, you know what it is? I think it's like a magazine. 200 and something pages. Yeah, so there's some good info in there. Very some good. good. Some interesting graphs and very well done. Like data. There's there's good data in there. So you find good info in there, Michaela. Well, yeah. Except some, for the fact that it's not printer friendly. Listen, there's some hilarious stuff in there though. I think <laughs> I think um, the implementation part of it. I think part of it was really well done. They name city stewards, so they identify responsible parties, but there's no um, specific like periodic reporting that I can find in this. There's no like, um, besides DPD as the main city steward, which is great. Um, there's no like governing body to make sure that like this stuff actually gets a follow through. So can I ask the, the, the first question? What's the point of this? What's the point of having a plan and a vision for uh, a long range plan for 15, 16 years, anything more than a few years. I mean, Teddy, do you have a long-term plan for your life? Like, you want to have long-term plans. It's a little plans. late for that. You want to have long-term plans. You want to you wanna know, like, where your you want to know what your end like, sure. and you want to get buy-in from you know all the all the different people that they got buy-in from. What happened to the buy-in from the last one? We never measured our. We didn't measure our progress in a meaningful way. And have well, no, you had periodic you had, a, you had a series of of there was a city managers that were here to collect uh, pensions. So you had three, three, and three, and out. You know that that's what happened. Ah, so that's why, so why, you, why if you're gonna be here for three years, you don't give a shit about the master plan. You want to keep the taxes down, and so it's easy to. You pull. answered your question though. By we 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 went around it. But like we're back at it now. The chancellor of the university so, is in control of this, not co city hall. Correct. That's why I want to leave the link out. The rest of it, I. Oh, I mean the master I plan. And I don't. Yeah, the master plan. Yeah. Low forward. And I, you know, I don't want to insult the folks who worked hard on it because obviously they worked hard. Lots for of hard it. work. There were some stakeholders it. and uh, you know a steering committee and Batch has a a breakdown of them as well. But we we have these things, right? Democracy is tough. Right? It's not it's not like a dicta dictatorship where, you know, a Putin can get in there for 30 years and, you know, make sure his vision comes true. We, we elect people, whether it's in Washington, D.C. or in on Beacon Hill or at Lowell City Hall. Right. We elect the council every two years. We elect, you know, we change our city managers every three to four years. And who do they answer to? They answer to the council, which changes. No, who does the council answer to? The co they answer to the people. Which ones? The ones who vote. People that are invested in this? Yeah, well, maybe the ones who are invested by showing up and voting, right? Isn't that, that's that's like who I would answer to if I were a counselor. Well, I, not, I, oh, I mean, I think okay. that's two different people, though. Well, you could have some continuity with, like, there was a huge, there's like a lot of people on the steering committee. You should have some continuity between the steering committee and periodic <laughs> reporting and measurement and have, like, a steering committee 2.0 for seeing it through. But the world's going to change. Some po Somewhere along the way, in 2030, yeah. the world will change. And something we thought we knew in 2023, as they were putting this together, is going to be obsolete. Yeah. Right? So you make a note but, of that. So so what's the point of planning that far ahead? I guess is my question. I, well, you don't want to just... Are, are these things really realistic? What do you just want to like fly by the seat of your pants and just say whatever but, happens happens and we don't know where we're going? You've been saying the same thing for ten years. Because okay. well, I've watched it happen. So for some I, things, I, for some things, I think it makes sense, right? So like in this, there's some stuff about the parks and the canals and greenways and that stuff like that. If you had, if you have, there's a plan in there that if you look at it, it looks it, it looks doable, it looks workable. I think people could agree on that. Something like that, you could put that aside and say, hey, for the next ten years. We're going to go in this direction, revisit it, whatever. Fine. Some of the other things in it, you know. So, so that's what I'm talking about. Land, so land conservation, parks, even some buildings and stuff, and maintenance. Mobility. Yeah, be, uh, hold off on the transportation. That stuff I get. But transportation changes. 
how do we so are we what are we planning for in transportation in the in this plan is it planning for all electric cars by 2050 that's a little heavy on or 2035 there's a, lot of, there's a lot of mobility ease of use for public transportation mm -hmm. Um, We're getting people back on the buses. They're, they're, they're going right? to stick to complete streets because that's where um, the money funding is. comes from. Mm -hmm. So they'll just follow the funding streams because mm -hmm. nobody wants to use their own money to do any of this, right? It was a little heavy on the bikes and walking. That's all complete streets. I was bundling right? another. But that's what a lot of the feedback that they got from the public sessions. That's what a lot of the people were. Because right. that's who today. shows up. The activists show yeah. up to these listening sessions. I would have, I would have liked to see. There was one thing from the last plan they got rid of. It, I thought Are it was you... the best idea, and it was the idea of having a, like a. When I say trolley, I mean like some a connector between the Gallagher Terminal and downtown. Mm -hmm. If you would, if you had like a just one spur that went around to the the garages in Gallagher and dumped people off downtown, that was on a regular off the road kind of like a, I say trolley, but it could be any kind of thing like that. That to me, like that's something that would be. That'd be good. Or like some of the walking paths we're talking about in this that go like between the streets, whatever. That kind of stuff can help, you know, get move people around. That's that's doable. Yep. But it's but the tro the trolley parts aren't in there. But the big parts we've we've explored the trolley thing. That's not gonna work. Well we have the connect the bus connector. We have that loop thing that kind of loops around, but it's not very yeah, convenient. Yes, so you haven't convinced me on buses. It's yet. not very convenient, but, and then you also have to pay a transfer fee. So you have to transfer from the suburban route to the local and like that's weird so i think the and lrt is really not really accountable to um, anyone they were named as the city i'll just mention they were named as the city steward for a number of the things that we want to have it in the implementation framework and there's not one entity or person from the lrta on the steering committee so they're named as responsible parties but i don't know how informed they were on being responsible so there's a weak chink in the armor. Do you have faith in the LRTA to meet some of the transportation things? Doesn't here? matter per se. I mean, I think I watched what little of the the giddy fest between the chancellor and the manager. I think I remember um, the guy that runs the LRTA. His name was brought up rather glowingly. Oh so, really? Oh yeah. So if you've got that kind of buy-in, then you've got a seat at the table whether it makes it to the appendix or not i don't know well it appears the city manager just from listening to that discussion has some kind of plan connecting the gallagher terminal to coming right down like the jam plan area and and connecting into the rest of the downtown and eventually what umass lowell is doing the discussion that you had with them with yeah there, there was some talk about that lots of what, talk what's about happening up there yeah lots of talk about the train and um but i didn't but, hear anything about like lrta specifically it, and i get the train thing it makes sense right because there's a you know people a ton of people commute from boston into i yeah. mean from lowell into boston slash cambridge the the hope is we can get them to commute in the reverse direction I mean, even if they don't move to lowell that they start coming here for some of these jobs which i assume are going to be how do you get from Gallagher length. to downtown in a way that makes so, sense? So that's the question. Is it is it buses? Is the bus the You should have a free you should have like a free there's no link between LRTA and MBTA in a way that you don't have to get off the train, pay for a LRTA ticket, user friendly and there's no bike paths that connect the the train to downtown there's not a clear easy walk you walk path. to the common it's very safe yeah well okay right exactly i mean i've tried it's, it, it doesn't make i i don't understand why that missing piece exists you brought up something before you go you, go on you were talking like people in tewksbury or wilmington or bill ricka were going to come into lowell right to to work potentially maybe play, yeah right but one thing that isn't talked about in lowell and i have no idea why it isn't is they're talking about extending the Lowell line all the way up into Manchester, right? That's called the Capital mm -hmm. Corridor. And there was a, some problems with Pan Am that was the ownership company that's changed hands somehow. And now there's, um, you know, there's some hardcore uh, anti, you know, anti-public transportation folks up in New Hampshire, the Free Staters or whoever the hell it is. But um, it's more likely that somebody in living in Goffstown is going to come down to Lowell to work than someone in Wilmington. Yeah, I, by, that's my my opinion. But by no, car, probably. No, down by but you can. You, you're by talking train, about by train. if you could get the train. If yes. you could get the capital corridor, and I'm not I'm not here to show for it, right? 
but I think that's much more likely in terms of people coming into Lowell than when you're in Wilmington, you're more likely to go towards the... Yeah, you, it's yeah. just as close well, to go to Boston that, as come to Lowell. You say this all the time, that there's the traffic going at certain times flows yeah, which all, way. Yeah. You say that all the yeah. time. Yeah. Right? Everybody but, comes to Massachusetts. So yeah. the, the train idea makes sense. Yeah. From New Hampshire, can I right just extend the line? Yeah. and they've talking about for bring it down from Manchester. Years, to Nashville, they've been talking about whatever. this whole thing for twenty know. years, thirty-five years. I know, right? Well, the, pro the MBTA We're, is also not very accountable. The, if only we had been able to pass a bipartisan infrastructure bill that could have a vision and do these kind of things in D.C. and, and invest in that really wasn't in these kind so of things. So you're saying it was a good idea? In, is that so you're saying I, it's a I good think idea? It's a very, uh, Jack, right. that's one of the few things I'll ever agree with Jack on. Yeah, but they didn't do any infrastructure funding but for they, it. But, you know, and I know we got some money for some bridges in Lowell, so yay, we're, we're excited. But still doing things. Is, is, it is it really that transformative? No, but, they should have spent it all on transport. It's like if Washington D.C. said, "You know, this is what we'll do for New England. We're not just going to give money to Lowell, and we're not just going to give money to Nashua or Manchester. We'll, what we're gonna, how about we create a transportation line, right? Train line to come on down. That's transformative. That's uh, that's thinking big picture. Aren't yeah. they doing something? They're doing something big like that. No, but I mean, I think the, not I think, here. But the point, I think the infrastructure. New England. In, I mean, what was the percentage of infrastructure of that infrastructure bill actually spent on infrastructure? It was a small percentage. I, I don't remember what it was, but it was it was tiny. It Jack, wasn't it? Jack, it wasn't, just, it Jack was, knows where I'm gonna go. It like. wasn't tiny, but I think what happened with some of the like the rail that uh, there was talk about a high speed. The, the idea of the capital corridor was actually it was supposed to because I was in on early. The pe people came to me because of my blogging, whatnot, um, lobbyists. But it, they want to go all the way to Montreal with it. Be oh, yeah, great. I'd love too. to take a train to Montreal. Right. Yeah, go see see back to home back to back home games, cool. the Canadians. Oh, that'd, be great. Like that. that'd be great, right? It's a nice but way to get there. Patrick Murray on his on his on his way somewhere down by the Cape in Route 24 or whatever it was, right? He figured out how to get uh, the connection to go out west. So Worcester. So it's it's going out to Worcester, and we got left high and dry. And um, but that part, but that's fine too. Like that's not a bad idea. Part of that I think was because Pan Am. I think the guy's actually the guy's name was Fink, you know, mm -hmm. um, was blocking everything in New Hampshire, but that's sort of moved by the wayside. So there's opportunities there. And now it's just elected officials in New Hampshire that are being kind of a stick in the mud because they don't want to do anything that's related to what the Democrats do. But yeah, that that could happen. But Patrick M M Murray got Tim Murray, you mean? Tim, yes, was gonna oh, go Pat, with... Patrick. Became oh. the head of Deval Patrick, Tim Murray, yeah, pa Patrick I'm, Murray. I'm just trying to keep Patrick Murphy's name in my head because they, <laughs> they hid his portrait again. Did they really? Yeah, it's gone. They moved him all around. <laughs> Is that why you're so bothered? No. Is it the Oak Is it at the Oak Court? Oh, no, no, I'm joking. Next to Pericles. Next to Pericles. So, so transportation that would be a good place. Would not for be a great it. place for that. It. Would, that be would be a good fine. Place for it. <laughs> so, transportation, Michaela. From what you've read, you're saying you think that this needs a a major transportation component, and the LRTA has to be central to it. Well, really talk about it, but okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to agree with you. I think that the I think, all right. Let's close. So, I think show. the LRTA because if you're <laughs> going to get people going to Gallagher Terminal, yeah. Taking taking buses into Lowell, where the jobs are going to be, hopefully in two to three and years. And with Link, yeah, exactly. And with Link, uh huh. Great idea. The bicycle and walking thing. No one's gonna walk from Gallagher Terminal. So I think over you to don't East get off, Campus you don't, or okay. wherever. You don't, That's not gonna happen. You don't get off the train, take your bike, and ride the rest of the way to no, your it's... job at over by east who's, campus who's like, five people six people fat asses over 40. no one's really How gonna many? do that yeah. younger, okay, younger people no one's really gonna do younger that. people what do you know? there's more young that. people on skateboards than get, bicycles nowadays right we're yeah, trying to get the most innovative uh industries with college students downtown and like all of these jobs 2200 jobs what do you those kids don't like to ride bikes they're gonna uber no, those kids don't. Did you see them? Lies. How, Lies. How many kids do you see biking between North and South Campus? You know, even when the weather's you nice. You know, you're wasting. I went to. No, you. Honestly, he's not going to ever. Play I'm not. Any. I'm not. I know. I'm not going to. It's because that's the pie in the sky. I don't thing. stand for this. Lowell, I don't stand for this. Lowell is not Cambridge bullshit. I really don't. Who's who's biking? 
I, go to Cambridge, everyone's biking. Go to Boston, everybody. Everybody. I don't think biking. you need to focus on the biking. I think you just need like a good pedestrian bridge that when you get off the train, yeah, you can just go over um, the Big Phil. Into the Thorndike Factory outlet. And, well, no, like oh, past, no, past that, and then dump into like bypass the uh, the homeless camps, and then just get into like the. Well, then you're into the shelter, but like go over by the um, courthouse, so then you can like walk yeah. down. Car Dutton Street. Street, like there is, you could have a walking car, and it wouldn't be that much longer gonna, than walking a Fano Hall. It's not, it's not the point. same. It, cars are just going to become way too expensive for people. Insurance is going to go up. It's good. Yeah, Kinsler so Ken, gonna, Kinsler Ken said she was talking to. Uber. She was talking to. Fine, whatever. That, that's your future of transportation. No, no, I have the future. It's cars golf carts, baby. Demand. Everybody get golf carts. And whether it's zip with zip cars, that, that's one of the things that Chancellor Chen talked about. These car services where you basically rent the car for two hours to drive back and forth. That but is, that's that what these young people no, are going to do. See? But you just the, have to make sure they're heavy enough not to go into the canal, the, like the bikes. <laughs> the idea of the bicycle is just, I, I just find that a waste of time and space, and they're better off looking A waste to, of space? It, it, yeah, they, the creation of the bike lanes and what. Find a way to, to get people to ride public transportation, buses, Ubers, I don't know, horse and buggy. We do have four months of winter, so. Yeah. We do have four months Thanks, of winter. So what are the, what are the working people going to do then? Ride the bus. Okay. Walk. Can we convince them to you ride the wear, bus instead of hopping on You can on put a jacket on and walk. A lot of people do it in the winter. I see a lot of people walking in the winter in Lowell. If I you would it. just allow working people to actually live in the downtown, that might be uh, helpful. Ah. So that brings me. he makes sense. <laughs> but see, that brings me to what I think was kind of my most annoying thing about this thing, right? And it was... When you look at the the people that were on the steering committee, and I'm sure they're all well intentioned. The majority of them were, you know, and and you've actually broken that down. You, yeah, you went and did a little research there, and you yeah, you it's got like, the breakdown of who was on that steering committee. of the 55 of them, and I don't know who came and who went, whatever. And so, like, you know, 18 percent of them were nonprofits, right? And 14 percent were higher ed. 10 percent were like on boards and stuff. 38% were citizens, although a lot of the citizens I know were involved in other things, but I didn't. I just counted them as the residents. The same activists who show up for the same, the, the same ones that brought us the, yeah. the big fill. And there were only two businesses, right? So two business owners. The thing that was drove me crazy was like the housing, everybody, affordable houses for everybody, affordable housing for this and that. And they did talk about other kinds of housing, right? But they had this stat. Let me find it because I did my research. And I love this stat because it was, they talked about housing, um, the housing burden, and it was, and it's like, oh, I feel burdened by not being able to afford my rent or whatever. So small families, it was 37% of the population feels it. 30% were like other non-family, like just single people or whatever. And then the elderly were 18%. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, if you, like the amount of pe- the, the that's of like 90% are, of the people said they, they're feeling the burden. Yeah, right? which of course everybody does, right? But I was thinking about it, I'm like, and they want to get to this point where you, like, but then they start talking about like housing for big families, little families, for everybody, right? You can't do everything for everybody. And you can't create all this affordable housing and have a vibrant downtown because, or, or any kind of economic activity because, you know, you need money to spend money. Focus on, I would be like, build a bunch of, one bedroom uh, units for people, right? Like small units. You could have one or two people, right? You limit the number of additional cars. You don't add the burden of children to the to the city, like the the cost of education and all that. You can have some of the market rates, some of them subsidized, or But imagine having a a path where people from UMass Lowell get out of school. They, they're not making any money. They're waitressing, they're bartending, or whatever. They you know they start off in their little apartment. They work their way up. They move into the neighborhoods and they stick around as they progress economically. That's lovely. That is be exactly lovely. what Chancellor Julie Chen talked about. Right. right. That's not what's way. in this plan. And then they talk a shit ton about the neighborhoods and the potential to rezone the neighborhoods to have more like two family homes and everything. I'm like, we cut up all these homes in the 70s, these big Victorian homes. They tore down homes and put those garden style apartments. Like it really destroyed the character of the neighborhood. I, if I lived in like the Highlands or Christian Hill, I would look at some of this stuff. The rezoning is an attack on my way of life in the neighborhoods. Like, no, there, yes, you, there is. As someone who grew up in a two family old Victorian that was a one family at one time, you don't have to cut up these houses and destroy the character. Yes, you do, because you, your neighborhoods get packed. There's just there's only so much room. 
So and you should, ADUs is what you're talking about. I'm all for ADUs. Too, I got no issue with ADUs. A lot of these old Victorians, who is going to buy a... A uh, ten thousand square foot old Victorian and live at them and live don't, it by don't, themselves. No, they, they'll knock it down and they'll they'll put eight units up. No, or you could cut it up in a nice way and make it a condo. But, that's right? but you, so when you many listen, of those but old people, people buildings, nobody, that's the way you keep them. Nobody says, "Oh, now that I'm finally making money, I'm gonna move. To, I want to really live next door to eight on an eight uh, eight unit housing thing." No, people want to move to a neighborhood. They want to have privacy. They want it quiet. It depends. We have that in Lowell. The difference between Lowell and Lawrence was well, a lot of differences, but one of the biggest differences is we have neighborhoods of single family homes. Lawrence doesn't have that, a lot of it. Like the neighborhoods, those people stay, they invest in the community. You need to preserve that. This idea of like, let's fill those neighborhoods up so we can fit more people in them. No, man, put them somewhere else. So that sounds like you're against ADUs. It, yeah, but an ADU is different. It's a, it's a one a one small, like a, a, a unit for like, I'd, I'd say ADU is one bedroom. Like if you have a if you have a house and you got like your cousin living in the back, fine. Or like what, like me, like I live in ADU. I'm just one guy. I take up one pocket space. I don't have like a bunch of kids running around. I'm one guy. Like that couple of ADUs in a neighborhood, the way it was set out, that would have been fine. So you're against but, like rezoning like entire neighborhoods that are one fa single family yes. and then knocking down all those houses and building big condos. That's what you're against. Well, but or, or even just taking like them and cutting them up. Like the character of the neighborhood, a lot of these neighborhoods, the single family homes. When you read this plan. They don't, they don't, like the housing folks want to get rid of that. Development in the downtown area <clears throat> doesn't require any parking set-asides anymore. That's good. That all just kind of like, I don't know. Well, look. and I think that's kind of, and I, I I know what they're trying to say, but like, if you want working people in downtown, people don't all work, there's no mills anymore. You live in downtown Lowell, you're going to have to drive somewhere to work. Well, unless you work from home, which is a thing yeah. that, that is. And I do like the infill, I do like the density idea of, of in downtown increasing the density for working people, but you can't have it all just be, it's gotta be a mix and it really has to be a mix. Working people, you need yeah. to get excited. You need to make it easy and convenient for people that are working people, whatever you wanna call it, to have no car and live downtown and drive to work with a zip car. That'd be nice, week, but. And drive to work wherever they work because they, they work in person once or twice a week get on the train to Boston once or twice a week, but otherwise they don't need a car downtown. But the, to me, that's those single unit, one bedroom, not studio because that's too small, but like like the studio plus, like that kind of unit that's affordable, that's what we need. So that's part of the UMass Lowell housing plan yeah. out on their East Campus, which, which I'm gonna sounds get to great, minute, that's but, not what this was. But what you, your, your housing discussion just brought me back to why these plans, while they look good, sound good, and are very well prepared and researched and whatnot, they're ultimately useless. Wait till they start talking about those zoning issues. Oh, they, oh. they need to change zoning to do a lot of this. Wait till that starts coming up. We saw it with the ADU debate. People that were pro-ADU suddenly became anti-ADUs the moment the political pressure started. Yeah. And, that's, and that's just with this council. Who knows what your next council is going to look like? Yeah. Or the one in 2032. <clears throat> So, so that's why, again, I question these. When you make these grandiose plans, you're committing your city, your community to a 30-year vision. The world changes in 30 years. Case in point, JFK Plaza. Does anybody like JFK Plaza? No. No. That was all the rage back in the in the seventies, though they did it in Boston. Brutal Boston City Hall. That's that's how you did everything Gross. back in the seventies, and then people say, you know what? This is ugly. Now we, you know, tastes change. The world's change. Okay, but structures need to be permanent. Politics, like structures politics. need to be semi-permanent. Yeah, but brutalist architecture always had a problem with uh, water leaks, but that that's different. They always that most of those structures were they weren't maintained correctly. So Anyways. that that's my biggest thing with this. Like, it's nice. It looks good. I mean, I do have a little bit of it's. It's much too what would activist you do? focused. Would yes. you do a five? The steering committee stuff. No, <clears throat> I I filled out the survey. Would you do a five year plan? What would you do? I I would try to focus on doable five year goals. Wait, what are you a Marxist? No, just <laughs> no, no, something that just something that can be done. Can, you know, can you know. Maybe the housing component is part of it, but you know, economic development is should be part of it because ultimately, for all of that stuff, if if there's any chance for Lowell Forward to happen, you better find a way to get some people with money into this city. Well, see, you I better think... find a way to create some jobs. And I want to 
Come, one of the graphs in there, Michaela, yeah, yeah, yeah. it shows one of the challenges that Lowell has, and that is you don't have enough jobs. You're you to meet the the num the to meet the people out there, right? You're so Lowell, Lowell's jobs are expected to grow over the next decade by seventeen percent, but it's below the the job growth rate for job growth rate i'm having a hard time talking it's my third podcast today but oh, it's you know the springfield it, springfield's a shithole isn't it we don't you know, and we're still behind them for job growth rate we'll have a Worcester, casino etc um in addition we're losing population now it's it says lowell's population is stagnating and this will continue over the next two decades as people move slowly out of the city well who's moving out of the city Working your people. Working people. It's your job seekers. It's your, it's your working people. Who's coming in to replace them? To a large degree, it's people of no means. Many of them are, are working people. Where are you getting this but data? There's a bunch. This was part of the. Uh, no, not this. This data. was part of low forward. Yeah, but right this, this, this doesn't say working people are leaving and non working people are Well, your leaving. population is. Who's leaving? That's why I'm asking. Where are you getting that data? Oh, no. All the, all the social service programs are working, so everybody's. <laughs> Um, getting rich and moving out. Well, I just want to know how you do you make these? How you do you can make look with these? Your eyes. Oh, you can look with your eyes. Okay, I I prefer to get my data from like places other than my own eyes. Well, you can check the. I think this is kind of telling you that. Well, the, I think that's the, what they're telling you. You can look at the mean income if it's available. It told them that long before this I report came yeah, out. Because it always means I mean, them the same thing. You could be completely right. I'm just wondering if you have any data or evidence well, behind what you're saying besides your own eyes. Lowell's ratio of, of jobs to population and an indicator of a silly, city's ability to attract and retain resident workers. Well, That's I, what they're telling you. We the can't whole, keep workers in the city. The whole I city. Am one of them. I I have some disposable income like I've never had now that I'm not putting kids through um, private Catholic school because mm -hmm. I don't want them in the, well, they went to high school. That was fine. That's a great school. But I didn't want them in the K-8. So they went to St. John Doc. Now that I have some money, I mean, I don't live in Haverhill because I tried to escape Lowell. Those were the people that took my offer, <laughs> right? Like... I try, but you have a bigger yard. It's a, it's a different it's a, kind of. And you're saying your school system got something. It's a better. No, I was saying when I, I had to put money into the school into private, the school, private school because I didn't want them in the in the elementary or the high school. Mid, no, the high school was gr okay. great for my kids. I don't have anything to say about, but behavioral issues don't get sorted out until sort of middle school. Yeah. And I I've heard some pretty bad stories. Yeah about what happens in the elementary and middle schools. The right. high school was great, yep. great, great, great. But a lot of whatever income I had was put towards education. And, you know, but I, I didn't ultimately leave Lowell with the income that I have, my discretionary spending. Although I just ate dinner at... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, listen, it's, I, my situation was <clears throat> similar. We, we looked for a house in Lowell and ended up in Chelmsford, but I spent more time in Lowell than I do in Chelmsford in reality, but I'm also, I'm middle-aged. I'm, you know, what the, the problem of, of people leaving is we, Lowell's population should never stagnate. We have a, a we literally have a world-class university of 17,000 students in here. And a lot of them who are graduate, graduate are they're engineers, yeah. uh, they're, they're nur right, medical professionals, the yeah. nursing school, the education school, the engineering school. Lowell is known for that stuff. Those kids aren't staying here for a couple of you reasons. Know I was also one of those. <clears throat> I went to the university and then I heard the message that they wanted to um, keep people from the university and have them sort of anchor in Lowell. And I did that. The problem that I had was and they expected me to just pay my taxes and keep my mouth shut. Right. Like I, I got involved politically in Lowell, but I was one of the people that came in through the university and stayed in Lowell for 19 years. I mean, I'll, I mean, to me, that the ideal thing was that you wouldn't have continuous growth. Like you don't want to have like 300,000 people in Lowell. You can't fit it. But like you would have say we have what are we at like 120 right now, 110. You have people that, you know, they stay, they accumulate some wealth. They live here for a while. They retire. They move on like kind of a like a like a circle right rather than just grow grow because you can only grow so much if i'm a recent grad from umass lowell and i'm a nurse or an engineer or whatever it is besides a job 
where I can probably get a job working hybrid in a few different places, at least a few times a week. What am I looking for in a city to put my roots down? I want things to be somewhat affordable where it can meet my budget. And I probably want a walkable, bikeable, vibrant downtown, places where I can go get coffee and meet my friends, places where I might not need to like sit in my car and drive everywhere. You go to Somerville, you go to places like that, and you have these like amazing restaurants and places to go and you can get to them easily and be outside, like great walking paths. That's probably what I would want and probably pay a little bit more money to settle down there well, if I'm young. But I Which think you about are compared to us. But I mean, I think about not it. Not in that stage of my life anymore. <laughs> I drive downtown, I park, you know, or not all the time, but I know where to park, but like you park in the garage and you can be down here for 10 hours and have a great time. It's not, I don't think it's. It's not the same. I don't know. Like having like a nice, like walkable city. Is... We walked, we went down there. We walked for like a two hour walk, walking around downtown. But did we have to drive to get there? Yeah, because I live in North Chelmsford. Yeah. I live in the Highlands. You can't, but you can't, you can't like get on. Like you, uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's like well, I could have got, I could have gotten on a bus at, at, uh, in, actually, right by my house, but it would have taken me 45 minutes to, to get downtown. The walk, the... and you also would have had to leave downtown when the last bus ran. Right, I would have to, yeah, I would get into Gallagher, walk through the, walk through, you know, the homeless camps, and then get downtown. It would have been. You have to shift. The media, all the metrics, right? I think the most important or easiest to measure is going to be median income, right? Like I, I started formulating this argument about, you know, how do we how do we get rid of uh, Section Eight vouchers, right? Like, but it's really that's it's it's really just about having more disposable income. It's once you start to to enliven the economy of the downtown, I think the the features that you're talking about that will be attractive to, you know, the bohemian uh, youngster, I guess, the bicycle, bicycling bohemians, it'll, they'll start to find it. It'll be here. I mean, it's here now. I, yeah. I read Reddit once in a while. They do talk about that. I was, you know, I was, I started reading Reddit to, to keep up on, uh, um, you know, the boo birds, right? But then I started seeing questions like, hey, I just moved to Lowell, like, what's cool? Mm -hmm. And 70 people are like, this is so There's cool, a good, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, all the stuff is sort of there, but what's depressing it is there's an, we piled up all the services in the downtown and there's this whole thing like why we couldn't move to high school because the services are downtown. So right. I guess we're going to have to keep all the people without any money in their pockets in the downtown because this is where all the services are. Right. Well, if we had better public transportation connecting people to the services in a convenient and affordable way, that would know, alleviate yeah. some of that need, don't you I, think? I don't know. I, I think we, should, we need a period of less connection between people and the service well, no, I think, for a while. I mean, no, no gentrification is what you need. <laughs> I, I think... Public transit would eliminate the need for all of the services to be so centrally located. A better public transit system. Yeah, I, a, I a just... transit system. For, I, I, I definitely like the Concord Carlisle Regional Transportation agency and we can put all the social services out there for a couple of decades and and send everybody out there because lowell has done it lawrence has done it haverhill has done it brockton fall river they've all done it for for a long time now well not not to feed and it's almost, almost like it's intentional right i mean and not to feed the beast and i hate to do this but like one of the things that i see is that especially during covid was that we you know we're allowed to do a lot of stuff uh because i work in social services believe it or not <laughs> But we, uh, you know, a lot of stuff was done. You had to do it either online or not in person or whatever. And you could see where there's all this potential for efficiencies, where if you had things like simple things that have been around for 15 years, like you sign your name once and it auto fills everything else. Like the, the government funded programs are so paper heavy, so bureaucratic. You could just streamline that shit and do it on your phone. And you wouldn't need to have people come in like, coming downtown to, to get their, you know, all, fill out all the paperwork and stuff. Like the Obama phone? Like the whole, like the way it's all administered is really inefficient. Incredibly inefficient, but that's whatever. So we've got about uh, 15 minutes before Batch has to turn into a pumpkin, but I want to show why I'm pretty sure I, I already have... turned into a pumpkin a while ago. <laughs> why, to me, the future of the city of Lowell is right there. This thing's beautiful. Lake, yeah, Lowell Innovation Network. 
network corridor. Let's see, this is why you link. I think a lot of the stuff that's in here, it's almost like if you cherry pick some of the good ideas, you'd come up with that. Don't think that these people don't know what that is about. Right. That was right. not kept in a in a right. siloed. Okay. It's all together. Which is good. good. Correct. The yeah. and, and I and I that's a that's a great point, Jack, because I I think a lot of what you will see in there if you read it and, and it is online folks go check it out uh you know the there is a lot forward. of good info it's really hard to find but it's it, a link you have now to that this has been unveiled a lot of that makes sense hmm. and a lot of the the vision that you know of manager golden the, the stuff the city needs to do up in the jam plan and hopefully the revitalization of the hamilton canal uh, plan there as well. Maybe we can finally see a little bit of life, but all of it really is dependent on UMass Lowell and and this development here. But I will I will say this to a lot of the people that Batch cited who were part of the steering committee and the and the breakup, they're not going to like what's coming because these companies who are coming in there into you know number two and number one where they're going to build these you know these working spaces where the students from umass lowell will be tied into these companies as as it paid internships and eventually the future workforce the housing that you see in there and i'm not just talking about the student housing but there's other there's professional housing there which is a lot of the concepts that you talked about batch smaller things right single people who right. graduated school they don't need a you know a massive place a, a glorified studio is is perfect for them but all this stuff is going to be pricey and it's going to eventually make the other stuff expensive as well so all the housing you're saying is going to be the professional housing is going to be priced so all the all this talk about affordable housing that's in the low forward thing it it's all going to be relative and I, I saw a little hint of it at UMass Lowell when Chancellor Chen and President Me, Marty Meehan made the presentation there you know they talked about okay well it's Lowell is affordable compared to Boston. Lowell is affordable compared to Cambridge, but it's not affordable for people who don't have good paying jobs. And that's a problem that, you know, I, I think there's going to be a lot of disappointment in well, that I, Lowell forward plan. I kind of disagree with you because if we're building smaller units, for professionals that are going to be staying in the area. You're building more units of housing that are smaller. I know they're not going to be super affordable, mm -hmm. but you're increasing the housing stock in that category. So unless we have like a huge surplus of people coming in and staying in, I don't see that making housing less affordable overall. Well, you might have, say if you had three people that, bought, that rented three single units, that's three, instead of renting a, a three bedroom house maybe that three bedroom house now becomes available to mm -hmm. to a family mm -hmm. it's i don't know the, this everything maybe has a time a... right there's a there's a cycle a lot of the people that are living along merrimack street they were refugees from what the south uh four point channel the artists right or other parts of boston that just gentrified their asses up here right <laughs> and and a lot of them, the biggest whiners that I run into are these sort of um, middle-aged white liberals that are kind of like crying about, because they see what happened to them coming this way, right? Oh, yeah. But and, and so they're trying to stop it because they don't want to have to move again. So they either have to like, I'll just to piss them off, pull themselves up by their bootstraps and learn and grow into the city that Lowell is should become because we shouldn't hold Lowell back so that. Right. I no, I agree. I'm just Mark this like, down. But no, but 100%. No, 100 you agree. said what I tried to say much more eloquently. So oh, what yeah. happened to the folks who moved from Cambridge or Somerville or Boston? into Lowell because it was more affordable. Yeah. That's exactly now what's going to hold that Lowell what down. This is going to do. Right, yeah. It's going to do the same thing to them as the industry in Cambridge. But I was just, they can go that. to Fitchburg. Right. Take all your freaking services <laughs> and go to Fitchburg I don't where agree. they would I, be happy to have you. They're going to be both. I we, love Jack Mitchell. We, but I would say that I love Jack Mitchell. But I would say the same thing that if you're if you're if you're like a 
<laughs> if you're if you yeah, can't so if you can't afford to live here, can't tell from the way we text to each other. But if you can't afford to live here, maybe you should go find somewhere more affordable to live, or just figure out how to get more money in your pocket. Lowell like built an identity on being a like, gateway like, oh, city. Oh, it's a gutter day. city. It's a gutter city. It's not a gateway city. It's becoming a gutter city. <laughs> oh my, we broke. <laughs> what did you break up? I don't know. What did you do to this my guy? Work here is done. I enjoy the rest of the podcast. Oh my God. What, what did this happen? It's a... Who's going to help me? No, but yeah. I mean, the thing is, is you would pull the safety net out, right? And you're like, oh, let dog eat dog. I'm not thinking that at all. But there's going to be a 25-year-old plan to to phase out the density of, of Section 8 vouchers. Like, there's got to be... You've got to tell CBA and all the other ones not to single out CBA, or I actually was thinking CTI, not CBA, um... Hey, your time is your time is coming here. Make a plan to get out. That was not enough, though. There's not. We need more. We need more. We but need there's, more. A, there's, that, a, that, there's a place for that. What CBA is doing in the Acre is is great. Yes. Right. Thank Those you. developments yeah, on yeah. Upper Market and Merrimack. The CBA is actually that, one of that's the That's great. And, Unbelievable. And there's stuff that CTI does that I think is good. I'm you not, need I'm those not organizations. A big fat Appleton Street. It's like, gee, I'm not sure I'm a fan of that's the best place to put people who are, you know, kind of struggling with issues. But you you're need right. those organizations. What's, you do. Jack, Jack won't say it because he's not as much of an asshole as I am. He, he kind of is, but he, he hides it well from his liberal friends. But we've had enough of poverty and low. It, it's we I, are, want, we are share. I want, the, I want share. to finally realize the benefits of being a university town and university towns world-class college towns don't have this syracuse doesn't have no, that it. don't know <laughs> they, they uh, have some level providence of has there's like between providence college and brown university is i guess effectively a wasteland <laughs> or you know like but, but bad example but i want to be cambridge i've always wanted to be cambridge except I for the can't politics believe I, mean, I don't want to be cambridge in what terms of economic on? development but I, Cambridge still I, I has Central Square. Cambridge. Cambridge still has Central Square. And look, every place will okay, have it. So every need, big city will have it. You need both sides of the coin. Of course you need do. professional we, development. You need, you need um, the university, and you need the services for people, and you need to have people here you do, that but, come here that might not have a lot of money. You but, need all of right, it. Right. Somebody's got to do Since the day Wang closed up shop, Lowell has not had that. Right. We've all, we've had we've gotten too top heavy, and I I think I wrote this in my article. You know. Yeah, the Poverty can't are... be your only sustainable no. business. You... And it really has been in Lowell. And we, we can talk about the artists, You're housing, right and this and that. You're... That's also low income. You huh? have to <laughs> diversify your portfolio. Yeah, Correct. yeah. 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 And also, star, as number one star on this as, podcast, all right. yeah. diversify your portfolio, but also because I'm, I'm, I'm turning 59, right? What's in your portfolio shifts as you get closer to re it matures. Okay, Lowell is not maturing. They're trying to hold a certain, de you know, sort of portfolio because of the the, the special interests that are holding well, the city back. There's also other factors at play here. As a as a country, there are certain things that are happening that are affecting. There's outside factors that affect your portfolio. I also think there's something we've said about us as as or all the cities above 495. I feel like are the state's attic the way the state looks at it, and this is where you send all the stuff you don't want in your living room. And I think you've seen like just the way it kind of it kind of works. The gateway cities are kind of yeah, yeah. and it's, it's a fancy title, right? Gateway city sounds fancy. and you get more resources. I mean, I I was when uh, whatever it was, oh, the, maybe it was the ADUs where I was saying something like. You know, you you got while well, the getting was good with the whole gateway city stuff, and you took everything, but now you don't want to give anything back. Right. You do. Oh, the city has grown and taken and profited off of being a gateway city. It has a history of. There's like a Lowell has a pride in being a gateway city. But like there's a, a cost to it, to, you know. And I think at some point you can you can say, you know what, we appreciate the offer. We're good. It was a We've gateway got... city, but it was a place of economic opportunity you yeah. have there to were have, always jobs and that's why you have to have going back to the right. industrial revolution and there were jobs yeah. So yeah we welcomed people yeah. in and the, you know you they, just we needed the, them. the broke we needed people them. were coming from ireland and then france and greece yeah and you need cheap labor 
and you needed the labor, but you need to exploit them. But, but now that's another way. That's we, we haven't had that economic so that's opportunity another... since Wang. We have it now, but there is a catch to it, though. So I mean, one my final slide is hold on, hold on. Look at the technology. I know. I just, there we go. What do all pretty much all these jobs require? Degrees. College degree. Degrees. And, and and advanced degrees. I I don't know, maybe there's a place for a DEI officer in each of these things, but I think the DEI train has left the station across the country. There's and, and you know, uh, Liam Skinner was talking about with Julie Chen about uh, you know, there's opportunities for high school graduates in here and, as well. And there might be, right? I mean, each building will need to be cleaned and plant manager. And, man, yeah, and somebody will need to be in charge of the landscaping. But, you know, we're talking about advanced degrees here, right? Biomedical devices, biotechnology, robotics, space technology, right? Environmental sensing and climate tech. You know, not cybersecurity. Not necessarily advanced degrees. I mean, we sure. do have the community college associate's degree. I mean, they're talking about reinventing high school a little bit and maybe expanding. I know Paul George's would love to create sort of like a five-year high school type of program. Can we have a bow? Yeah, so I well, think there's- electrician. So there's, so I work in a degreed position in part because the, um, well, the governor has now created a thing where experience is, um, is, is calculated equally to credentials, right? But I, it was just the way my um, department worked where they took people that had construction experience and because I don't, I don't have to design, I'm, title the civil engineer, but I don't have to design anything, right? I'm a construction manager, which I have all the skills to do that. But the, you know, this doesn't necessarily, they'll all be degreed things there, but of course it's the university is building this. They're building themselves. They're locking themselves in as the hub to this wheel. But I have a, I think, and, and I used the wrong word. Thank you for correcting me. It's, it's not, I didn't, I said advanced degrees, meaning masters and doctors, but it's not that what it is, is it's, it's serious degrees. No disrespect to the liberal arts majors uh, and like political yourself? science majors. Yeah, no, like, 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 the like the, the people who no, I'm talking about myself. No, I, people me who too. wasted money to go get a master's degree in you know broadcast journalism. Uh, you know political science majors. Uh, you know theater. <laughs> well, these look like woke, uh, these look woke like technology, you know, women's yeah. studies, gender. Well, well these look like difficult. This isn't for you. And and those people, you know, it's at some point there's going to have to be a kind of come to Jesus moment for a lot of these folks. Like the world is changing. They can just have AI do all their. Well, well that's AI is coming. So you're AI not talking about doom and doom, 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 doom it, right? Like, OK, now all of a sudden we're creating all these so AI can push us all up. No, no I think this is great. There, there'll always be a need. This, for is, these this, folks is, a, this is a 30 year. This will last 30 years easy. But here's, yeah. here's, I said that because AI is on floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I but here's where, here's where I see a positive thing. So when you look at like, what is it, medical devices and all that stuff, you've got a uh, regional, I mean, a, a university is part of a statewide system, and you've got a, right now, for at least, I'm hoping, you know, more than three years, you've got a, a city manager that knows how to operate regionally, right? He's a, he was a state rep. If you've got people developing medical devices, the key is that when you start, when you get to the point where you're manufacturing, even if it's at a yeah. small scale and like a testing, of, if you can keep that in the area, whether it's in Lowell or, or next door, you can create jobs in manufacturing that are, for people that are at yeah. the lower, just like after Wang collapsed, right? Uh, what's his name? Louis Pedroza had Qualitronics. He was making circuit boards. Portuguese people were coming over. They were working. It's like this. You can do it. You can do it when you've got a couple. Like you just need this group to stick around and make their, you know, if they're going to make medical devices, do it around here. And then you can employ some of the people that are downtown. So is there a drawback? I love, I love that. Is there a drawback to this? It's gonna be so much traffic, Teddy. <laughs> that that, that was a drift. Lane. Somebody asked about the draft. Oh my traffic. God! It's gonna take a half an hour to get to the. Someone old asked court. about the shadows that are gonna be cast. And is LRTA in their involved? In, is, it, is LRTA involved in this at all? Well, they would almost have to be. Wait, wait, wait. Kayla, to bring wait, people would say, down. Would you say somebody was? The, the new building's gonna change the He's shadows. Talking about wind turbines and shadows. His and building. Would, no, not wind turbines. They're, they're talking about the actual structures. Oh, I thought you were like. We're gonna That was one of the people who spoke. 
asked a question. And then there was, of course, the obligatory, is, is there an affordable housing component oh, to this? They asked Julie Chen. And uh, she she adeptly uh, kind of... Uh, Say no. No. She adeptly kind of, you know, dodged no. the question, but the answer basically is no. Oh, it's so not, I see. So the, no affordable housing component. the shadow is going to um, is be, gonna be created behind the ballpark where there's some uh, homeless I, I, camps. I believe, it, well, I believe it's the people living near, like, the one and three. Hey, you know what? Say what, say what you want, but tops don't cast shadows. And as long as you can see the Christmas tree from Christian Hill, we're good. We're good. Oh. So, and there's a lot more space there. That it, the low look at the old low plan where the post office is mm -hmm. to the to the um, to the right of Cox Circle there um, where that parking lot is. Oh yeah, is that all empty be, in this? And, be, and behind that's, that's the low high gym fields. Right, there's a lot of oh yeah the garage. That's the, that the was campus. Brian Martin's idea was to but, put an athletic field on that top on that roof. Yeah, there's more. There's more stuff coming. There are. There's two lots right. There are two lots right there. So, so. Let me ask you this. This is really cool. And any resistance to the TIF that's going to be required to bring this in? No. Which I'm told is, it's a pretty good If you can give tip. a TIF to Sal, you can give one to anybody. <laughs> you can give what it is, to me. So what, is, huh? what, what is it going to be? I, I don't know the specifics, but I'm told it's a, it's a good it's. It's a good tip. Now is Trinity running this? <laughs> no, they, they, they're actually the. They're taking over the bus. So, so yeah, that, yeah. that's the best part. The firm that's running this, the private developer, has done this in 19 different areas around the country. Oh, is it they, Win? Is it Win? They, they did, no, they did Duke, great at it. Duke oh, University. They've UPenn's been down in a Drexel? UPenn and Drexel, a combined thing. They've been out at. Uh, Have you seen uh, any of their developments? UC Irvine, I believe, or Santa Clara. They've done a ton of things, and and um, Manager Golden and Chancellor Shen talked about seeing the place in no, Philly. Is, is part of the TIF building a parking garage right next to the? parking garage <laughs> but do you do you anticipate any issues with that yeah the, you know you know the re so there's gonna there's be always, some residents we're all, giving away somebody's giving always, away. Somebody's we're always gonna gonna be, they're thinking about their taxes today and they're not thinking about the future you know the payback point right but i mean we've got to be careful because there's sometimes people they take what's loaded up front and then once the deal runs out they scram so, <laughs> yeah but it, but don't you think a, a, a rebate on nothing i mean right now there's nothing there right so you're gonna build something but but not you know you, you give them a rebate you're still getting more than what you had before it, so what I, is, the I, loss? is there any, are there any losses of like not like is someone gonna come in tomorrow and build something that's worth you know nope. worth it? so exactly so like there's no loss and it's university land anyway so it would be so right and, the, and they don't do the vip tenant winterfest down there anymore so right. it's fine oh. <laughs> so and i kind of trust i mean i i trust from what i've heard it sounds like the question for me is like how much do we trust the people running this show should, and i should the city put in a protection in there that the developer can't send sell this land back to the university wait say that again wait what sell it back or turn it back over to the university whereby I'm... it could potentially become non-taxable again i believe in clawback provisions i'm a just a proponent oh sell it back to I, the I, university. I, if i were the council I, i'd give them any tip they want i really would right. but For i would long, put like a but i would put a provision in there no up 10 years is that's the standard tip markley group got 20 but that was a unique place most of the tips are 10 years i think it's slide ten, down 10 percent um, you know, zero, it's a hundred percent tip the first year, 90, the second, 80, the third, and you go all the way down. But I would, I would want some kind of guarantee in there that in year 10, this developer doesn't go the Trinity route at one ten canal, right. sell it to the university like a, and uh, go, and the, go tip should be, the tip should be tied to metrics, right? So many jobs, so much this, That's so much good. that, and that you, it should be, you know, if you don't hit those goals, then you tip goes away faster i yeah. think this i could see this council being able to understand that and do that i'm not sure about the ones before <laughs> future councils yeah i think the system we have now you've got um a better chance of that happening future councils wouldn't be able to undo something right they might not reinvent no but like say this say this it's, say that, like it didn't get all worked out under this council the next council i think would be like say say the agreements weren't worked out now and you had to wait like two years I think the the system now. So um, my hunch is the TIF agreement's already worked out. Otherwise, we wouldn't, you know, Governor Healy wouldn't be coming here on on Thursday to to make it the next announcement in this. But there are components, you know, things happen, right? Recessions hit, job numbers maybe aren't met. COVID hits, and job, you know, and job numbers that were promised suddenly can't be met. 
there's got to be some there's got to be some political flexibility there as well future future i think i think this council would understand that. it's just going to be fair to me i think that that's why it's so important that the partnership between the city and the university is a really good one because to me it seems like all the leverage we have with these developers that are negotiating these plans is pretty much through the university the city has some sort of leverage right but we kind of really want this to happen and so to make sure that the university gets a good deal and the city gets a good deal, you need to have like a super solid partnership where the city really understands what's going to happen. And I hope that that's the case. The university is, you can count on them for a hundred years. They're not going anywhere. All no, the but to negotiate that, a good deal for right, the city. But all the people that come in and promise the pie in the sky, all right? Mm -hmm. If anybody can be sort of a, a considered a long-term <coughs> partner, Salapoli can come and go, right? Like all these people can come and go. But the university isn't going anywhere. It's been yeah. here for a long time, and it's going to stay here for a long time. Yeah, no, it's a great partner. I've got to stop agreeing with Jack so much. I love it's this actually making sense. I love well, this the point. the big government is the answer, right? This is true trickle down. This is it's private partner. It's private public partnership. Correct. It takes two to tango. Yep. All right. And and to her credit, for all the crap that she's gotten on the pod squad, from this seat in particular, Maura Healy, I guarantee you, has made some guarantees to make this happen. That you know, and that was probably why UMass Lowell was so you know kind of hesitant to push back against the ICC. Well, was we what to... was this oh. right here? I'll, I'll give you but that. Also, That's and, bad give, off. And, and also give some credit to to Lori Trahan That's and, and Congressman Trahan, Trahan and, and Washington D.C. because there's some infrastructure work that needs to go down there. And, and Chancellor Chen talked about That's this as great. well. And I got a hunch you're going to see an announcement soon from her regarding money to make sure that that happens. So there's there's a role for government in this kind of stuff, 100%. And the bitter pill is the ICC. The, that's look, a fair trade, that's fair. I'll, 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 I'll take it. And, and that's what I say. When I first started catching that's rumblings fine. of this, I said, okay, I don't care if they keep the ICC as a migrant shelter for the next 20 years. I, <laughs> Their okay. neighbors, Middlesex Community College might not be happy, but if, if this, is, if is, this is the price to pay, that is a win. okay, because eventually this will spread out and it will eventually get to the area where the ICC is. And I had, is, I had a grand time at well. Lenzies. I'm fine with that. <laughs> she said to get the Lenzies for that. <laughs> so, no way to have a thing anymore. See, we can have nice things. This we, is really Lo exciting. Lowell right. can have nice things, and even Lowell forward is somewhat possible because of that i see a link though between these two things i think some of the we need lrta to be the physical like we gotta we gotta do something with LRTA. i don't know i think it's golf carts so that, that's golf my... carts would be final i don't tell you just buy a bunch of golf carts <laughs> where, where i get negative on that is the communities that we're trying to be like they all have subways Lowell's not getting a subway system or a, or a train. I should uh, say a train system. Fairmont Green Line is getting an electrified trolley. We could do trolleys. <laughs> they're getting they're getting one, you know. What's the price on that? I don't know what the price is, but we could do it. Let's we blew our chance. We we could have had the trolley. Listen, back in the, it. Back in the day, they used, to, they used to have trolleys pulled by friggin' horses. We can go back to that. How much is a horse? You know, it can't be that <laughs> they're expensive. Pretty expensive. <laughs> they're pretty expensive. We could use a goat. You got goats at your house, don't you? <laughs> you Greek. That was when I was in drinking. No Any final thoughts, Jack, from you? You've been unusually quiet and, and actually making sense. I'm worried about it. You know, I know it was all full of piss and vinegar. We, we, in here. We recorded. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of cheerleading going on right now, right? It's sis boom bah, right? Rally, rally, rally. Um, it's about the long game. It's about holding people accountable. It's about when if things start to go a little bit sideways, that you're not afraid to ruffle your friend's feathers to get them back on track. And if counselors are rolling over, get rid of them. All right. Yeah. Like you got to This is your this is your best shot for a while, because it's not just that area. It's also that area around Songus. It's also that area that's between um, the Athenian and uh, what's a uh, Western Western, Western Ave. studios, yeah. right? Yeah. Like this, it's also, I think it's also about extending that train line up in New Hampshire and some of these things like this, this is a good start and there's going to be some growth and, you know, trying to figure out how to make the services migrate 
you know, you don't get rid of it. You're not getting rid of every working poor person. Right. But we don't have to be a Mecca for the working poor. Well, right? I, I, like, I look at it like this is probably one of the most positive things I've seen in a long time. And I, I, I do want to go back and see. I might be, I hope I'm not remembering this incorrectly, but that whole project back in the 80s before the mills burnt down was kind of similar to this. But I, the accountability thing, I think, is important because when you look at what happened to the jam plan and those back then we had the Belvedere Nine running the city and now that that's over like I think with the district representation there's a better chance of having people be accountable right mm -hmm. like they they just sat back and let it happen I don't think this system we have that you you'd see that again so I think we can hold them accountable but we have to pay attention so yeah. we have no fears that the university's plan is isn't going to happen well, I'm not afraid of the is university that, is anyone concerned that the little forward plan mm -hmm. Well, this, I mean, this is what it is. It's a nice that need to happen to make sure we're like on track with it, and it doesn't just collect dust on a shelf the way the other one does. It's cute. They I think it's, the hip, I think. I think there's some good guidance in here. I think it's not a it's not a Bible. It's not a. You can point to a lot of the things in here to try to make other things happen. It's an you it's an advisor it's an advisory document. That's how I look at it. I mean, short of at inaugural, you kick out the Bible and you have all the councilors swear on this thing there's always going to be risk right but if the positive things are happening and people are investing in the vision of this yeah. along with the vision of that there's not going to be any thrust to make it go away right. if this starts to flounder that's when yeah. the people that are going to be like trying to pull it out and, and you know put a put a bullet well, in it. it's like a mission statement nobody i mean it doesn't really do anything <laughs> but it's nice well, to have it's a reminder but, of but the problem is when the mission statement doesn't get followed word for word people start to go oh we had this plan and everybody ignored no, it they put it in a that's why i'm so the university thing it's, it's a tangible plan and in, in four years it's done 2027 if all goes well that whole thing is complete that's yeah. why but it's a four-year plan it's i heard that about a, the, i heard that about the the courthouse not, but you know it's not a marty gets buildings done quickly he got a bridge built a lot faster than, nah. than they did the work bridge this is too ambitious too many things i'd rather see them focus on one thing at a time and i think the gallagher terminal coming down through the jam plan stuff and transportation i think that's a good place to start because it works with this and there's also the the acre stuff going on the tdi transformative development initiative so you kind of get that stuff there but all of that is kind of based on development the housing stuff and that stuff yeah, yeah the housing stuff put it a away. Little, the housing stuff's a little put it weird. away for let's let's tackle that later but you can tick off some with that plan you can tick off some of the stuff i mean you like you could like the you know the non what is it the small family or the non-family like pressure points or whatever of housing what they're talking about there does meet that need. You're creating sink, like housing for for working people. If we're that's not, part of the plan. If we don't have some sort of plan with housing that's well thought out, that has a lot of community involvement, things are going to happen to us by accident that nobody likes. What's, what's and that's it? why I like this. Plan. But people I, leave. I think the plan is there. I, I, I'm not sure you're going to like it. And check, there was a motion. Was it last week or two weeks ago by Council Robinson talking about like seven story building and building up right yes and i've i've heard those words come from others as well so something tells me that that's He's you know, been particularly... you're not you're not going to fan out to create right. more housing but you're going to go up there's been several sort of motions in through the city council in the last three years or whatever it is now about like how to how to fund development inside the existing buildings right um i know robinson talks a lot about uh whatever building is over the rest of uh the smokehouse right like that i guess upstairs that's a lot not unlike uh the smith baker center the smith baker center you know we've we've got to figure out a way to invest in with the investors but if it's not a tip it's some other type of thing to get that space all utilized so we've got the space and I'd get rid of the national park. No, oh. no, yet. What the hell? Oh my god, I don't like we're, this. We're gonna cut that right there. That could be the topic for the next podcast. They could, Jack they Mitchell. could loosen up on some of the regular, on some of the things. I'll oh give you that. God. Let's get rid of the cobblestones, though. Jack Mitchell, <laughs> Michaela, Andres McCarthy, the worst. Mike Bacigalupo, the Pod Squad. All right, again. All right, thank you. Thanks. Too much yes. agreement. I don't like it. Not amongst me. <laughs> thank you, all of you, for joining us. 
as well here in the WellPoint studios. Till next time, stay safe, everybody. Oh, it's so slippery.